it's no secret today that these are turbulent times for for banks. If we think about what's happened over the last, you know, 18 months, there's been, you know, continual interest rate increases by central banks in many countries. There's been um, supply chain disruptions due to COVID. There's been rampant inflation where central banks have been forced to take action to try to tame that inflation. And there's been a curtailing of consumer expenditures, you know, as a result of that. And some countries are facing what's known as a mortgage cliff, where just to give you an example, in Canada, by 2026, one billion dollars, or sorry, one trillion dollars of mortgages are set to be renewed, at which are currently sitting at you know three percent, three and a half percent, now set to renew at potentially anywhere between five and seven percent. So that represents a huge threat to. Uh, to banks and and obviously to the to the mortgage holders as well. So if you think about all these turbulences kind of coming together, you know, banks need a way to a fast, nimble, agile way to account and plan for disruptions. So Axolytics has actually developed a an asset to assist banks with modeling these different scenarios in a rapid fashion. Let me go ahead and take you through this example. So in this case, what you're seeing here is a dashboard that allows us to enter things like growth assumptions, looking at different scenarios and sensitivities analysis. And again, banks are going to need a rapid, agile decision layer that has all the key metrics that are important to their financial health available to them to be able to model out these scenarios. And that's what the Axolytics strategic planning asset for banks powered by Anaplan does. So let's go ahead and, and, and walk through it. So let's go ahead and go into growth assumptions. So on this particular dashboard here, what we've got is the ability to kind of look at, you know, uh, different growth scenarios. And you can see right now there's a constrained growth scenario where we can enter asset growth and liabilities growth in, in, in you know, in absolute numbers, as well as an unconstrained growth scenario. And if we wanted to, we could actually create a new scenario here just by clicking on this button on the dashboard and just call it, you know, new scenario. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, and apply that. So we create this new scenario, we apply this scenario, and now you can see we have a new placeholder. And here's where we can, you know, model out just a quick top-down example of a of a PL and a balance sheet for a bank. So just by saying, you know what, in this case, we're going to go with uh, let's say 250 million. And for, you know, for asset growth, and let's go ahead and uh, go with, let's say, 150 million of liability growth. What does that look like? And we can easily, you know, just select that new scenario and immediately see what those, how those top-down assumptions are modeled out. And then we can go down to the individual product lines and look at residential mortgages and say, you know what, let's put in a, let's put in a growth assumption for that instead of you know, instead of instead of that amount, maybe put in a little bit uh, a little bit more. And basically, by doing that, we can track that override and also uh, see immediately what that means in terms of the you know top line growth number. So, this example here just allows banks to kind of quickly model out a balance sheet based on asset and liability growth. Spin up a new scenario, put in some assumptions, see how that gets pushed down to all the bank's product lines, and then be able to make adjustments and holds and overrides. You know, to kind of build that back up and see ultimately kind of where you're going to sit. But again, this is the first example of being able to rapidly spin up a new scenario using the Axolytics strategic planning asset for banking powered by powered by Anaplan. Let's move into another set of assumptions here, where now we're looking at um, you know specific product lines. In this case, residential mortgages, but you can see you can have all your other uh, sort of product lines here, including like HELOCs uh, as well as like unsecured lines of credit, etc. And you can see all of their current assumptions uh, around those different product lines. And let's take a look at mortgages, for example. If we think about, you know, some of the risks that potentially could be sitting around mortgages, you know, maybe our credit risk is actually going to increase. We need to plan for that. And you can see along the top on this dashboard, all the key metrics that the bank cares about is measuring. And again, you can have as many metrics as you want uh, within the solution. Uh, You can change these metrics, you can add new ones, etc. In this case, we're concerned about net interest income margin change, 
earnings per share growth because that's what gets reported to the street or to anybody that kind of is, is financing us or whatever. Uh, then you've got your productivity, leverage ratios, wholesale funding rates, and um, net stable funding ratios. But in this case, if we wanted to go ahead and say, you know what, we need to, we're, we're seeing this mortgage cliff. We think there's going to be an increase in delinquencies, you know, because with that mortgage cliff coming, you can bet that there's going to be a lot of uh, risk to uh, the you know bad debts, basically, where essentially banks are going to have to set aside additional capital to kind of cover that. So in this case here, you know, if we go ahead and just override this and go to 15%, you can immediately see the impact on the bank's KPIs. And again, it's that real-time modeling capability uh, where you can immediately see the impact of an upstream change to a downstream impact, uh, you know, using using Anaplan. And in this case, if we also wanted to override, let's say our required stable funding uh, is going to go to like 59%, we can go ahead and select that and you can immediately see what that means for, for the bank's key KPIs uh, as well, where we're, you know our wholesale funding rate actually had to go down and our leverage ratio went up and you know our product re- productivity ratio and EPS looks, gro- looks good, but our net income uh, growth in terms of change in terms of basis points actually went down. Uh, so again... Being able to understand the immediate impact of changes is, is going to be key uh, to banks kind of staying ahead of these of these challenges and being able to anticipate using again this nimble, agile decision layer, you know, created by Axelix and, and powered by Anaplan. So then, if we move into regulatory constraints, again, here's our here's all of our key ratios, right? So we've got our tier one capital ratio, we've got a leverage ratio, we've got a liquidity coverage ratio, and net stable funding ratio. And let's suppose that maybe uh, liquidity coverage, uh, you know, because of the you know these impending challenges to uh, you know consumer debt and so on, maybe that's going to increase to 120 percent. And just by doing that, Anaplan has automatically remodeled all the downstream impacts of the, of this change uh, going going forward. And maybe our tier one capital ratio is going to increase as a result as well. So we can make those changes and immediately see kind of how they're how they're going to be modeled out. So that we can anticipate and plan for these, you know, these potential impacts, and and really allows us to kind of get ahead of these events, uh, so that we can anticipate and, and sort of take action now to to account for those. And again, we can change, uh, you know, our wholesale funding ratios if we wanted to. We can change our liquidity cr- coverage ratios for both short term and long term uh, wholesale funding, etc. And we can also change the mix in terms of our operational risk. Like maybe there's going to be a lot more risk, you know, in retail. So we can go ahead and put that assumption in as well. And then just by going to um, to our scenario dashboard, we can immediately see kind of what the impact is on all of our key KPIs and also see what the balance sheet is looking like, looking what the ratio, the key ratios are looking like, and also what the PL looks like. And again, this is a really quick way, based on some assumptions and some drivers, of actually being able to model out an entire set of bank financials in matter in a matter of uh, of seconds. Uh, and again, that's the power of the Anaplan platform is that real-time modeling capability. So that's and and so then if we kind of dive in a little bit further and look at some different different other scenarios we could do, you can see that we have you know a cons- there's a constrained growth ratio, there's a change a change in liquidity coverage, there's a change in provision for credit losses, there's a there's a change in due to dropping a business line. You know we could go ahead and add you know a, add a new scenario here. So we'll call this one new scenario. Just put that in. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll change, uh, pull some levers and immediately see what the impact is on our bank as uh, as a result of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put in this new scenario. And then what we can do is, you know what, maybe we want to compare this to, you know, maybe our constrained growth scenario. So let's go ahead and compare this to our constrained growth. And again, you could pick any new scenarios uh, that you want here, but we'll pick our base case scenario. And then you can put in any kind of notes you want about this scenario. So I'm going to put, compare this to our constrained growth. I'm going to go ahead and apply, you know, sort of seed that variance. Um, and then what you have is sort of that blank, that uh, sort of blank slot, if you will, where now we can go in and start playing with, you know, what if our liquidity coverage ratio increases to 125%? What's the impact? And you can immediately see what the impact is on the balance sheet and in the PL as a result of that. So we've got some headwinds there. Maybe we also have to go ahead and and uh, and, and have more capital and apply that as well. And maybe we also think our, you know, provision for credit losses are going to increase dramatically. And you can see the numbers in the balance sheet and the PL changing instantaneously. And again, that's that full downstream modeling in, you know, in memory and in real time with the Anaplan platform. So again, just being able to, um, you know, pull these different levers, create new scenarios on the fly, and immediately see kind of what that impact is, a key, um, a key success factor of uh, what banks are going to need 
in these turbulent times. And and the Axolytics uh, solution, uh, strategic planning solution for banks powered by Anaplan is is a key, is, is a key tool that banks can leverage uh, to quickly understand and model out the impacts of adverse conditions on their you know on their financial statements. Then if we go ahead and move sort of to the next step, which is you know looking at different potentially you know business line changes, uh, where you could say you know what maybe we're going to look at potentially either adding a new business line or or um, you know or or getting rid of a business line. So in this case here, you know we could say you know what let's um, you know for this new scenario, in addition to all the changes we made previously, let's look at getting out of you know unsecured lines of credit because you know you've got no collateral uh, to back those, and so they're high risk, right? So let's go ahead and we'll select un, you know um, we'll select unsecured loans, unsecured lines, and you can immediately see what the impact is on the financials uh, as a result of that. So you know without sort of without that without that uh, without dropping that business line you can see our EPS is is currently at about uh, you know minus $16 because obviously because we had a lot of headwinds in the last scenario uh but now if we go ahead and we get rid of those uh, those unsecured lines our financial picture improves a little bit as a result of that but again this is the kind of capability that's going to allow banks to just quickly do a lot of different scenarios around the different business lines and which ones to add and which ones to drop and so on. What's essentially what they should stop, start and continue going forward in order to kind of weather some of these challenges that are coming. You know, the, uh, the actual solution for this uh, powered by Anaplan is, is, uh, you know, is, is key. So, that, so now we'll move into sensitivity analysis. So in this case, uh, what we'll do is we'll look at some scenarios here. We've got the net stable funding ratio, we've got tier one capital, and we've got uh, liquidity coverage. Uh, and we also have three different cases. There's a tighten limit, there's a relaxed limit, and there's a there's a base limit. So now let's go ahead and tighten tighten this limit. So our net stable funding ratio maybe is going to be at like 120%. And you can also see in this upper upper section of the dashboard, first of all, what the impact is on earnings per share uh, for both the tighten case and the relaxed case. So now if we go ahead and put in a tight limit of 120, we can immediately see what the impact is on our earnings per share. Uh, if we look at our tier one capital ratio, you know, under the Titan case, we're probably going to need to have, you know, a lot more available. So what happens if that goes to 20%? Well, you can immediately see the impact on earnings per share. We go from $5.91 down to $4.25. Again, a lot of headwinds under the Titan case. Liquidity coverage ratio, maybe we need to go to 125% as a result of that. And we can immediately see that our, you know, we can see the immediate in this waterfall chart, uh, the impact, the visual impact on earnings per share. Then under the relaxed limit, you know, what if we, what if we end up going down to 100%? Well, we can see that that's going to positively increase, obviously, uh, earnings per share. Our tier one capital ratio, maybe, maybe you know, economic times are going to be better, and we need to have less capital. Uh, so, as you can see, that's even a more positive impact. And our liquidity coverage ratio, you know, maybe we don't have to have enough, uh, you know, so much set aside. Uh, and so, as a result, you can see that our earnings per share goes from five ninety one up to six hundred, you know, six dollars and sixty nine cents a share versus five ninety one down to four sixteen. But again, we've modeled out two, like one best case and one worst case scenario, you know, what's the value of being able to have that information at your fingertip in a man in fingertips in a matter of seconds? Let's go ahead and model out some other changes. Like what if there's a basis rate increase? Like what if the Fed or the central bank, you know, central banks in other countries continue to, you know, to hike rates? Well, what if there's a 50 basis points increase? What does that mean? So under both the the tighten and relax case, we can see kind of what that impact, what that impact is. And actually, I meant, I meant 50, not 20. So we'll put 50 in. Uh, and as you can see, that led that that leads under the under the Titan case to a 66 cent per share decrease in uh, you know in earnings per share. What happens if the Canadian dollar continues to go down? Um, you know, the U.S. economy, consumer spending still going strong. So potentially, you know, what if we're looking at you know a 10 percent decrease in the Canadian dollar? What does that mean? So again, that you know, on the Titan case, that leads to a six a six cent per share uh, increase, and on the Relax case, that leads to a six cent per share decrease. So again, just being able to easily model out these scenarios, right? Using that single having that single source of the planning truth, and being able to spin up new scenarios, being able to pull different levers, and having all the you know all the downstream impacts modeled out in seconds, um, you know, we think is going to be a key. Uh, a key value for you know a, a key asset for banks um, you know through these through these turbulent and also good times as well. Then if we look at another example here of well where are we going to get the best bang for our money? Like if we choose to invest somewhere, what is the best value? So if we look at it from an asset 
uh, you know, point of view, if we just put in like a hundred, you know, let's say a hundred million dollars of assets, uh, what does that mean? So in this case here, we can look at our different product lines and see all the key metrics in terms of net income after tax, earnings per share, return on equity, margin, provision for credit losses, et cetera. So we can immediately see from a, you know, from an earnings per share standpoint, that insurance lends itself to a huge return. And you, you can't pick up uh, any kind of uh, publication these days without hearing about you know, catastrophic claims due to climate change and everything else. And so there's a huge amount of claims. And as a result, insurance premiums are being hiked as well. But insurance seems to be a good rate of return for a bank. So uh, to kind of expand into that business line. So maybe they go back and maybe you go back and you add that new insurance business line, invest in it in terms of assets and liabilities, and be able to kind of model out some of the scenarios around. So where, you know, where this really comes in handy is you know, again, adding new business lines and immediately being able to model out the full set of financials based on some assumptions around those. So again, just being able to do that with, you know, the Axolytics strategic planning asset for banks powered by Anaplan uh, is key. And then if from, you know, if we put in, a, let's say, $100 million of liabilities, you know, where we get the best bang for our buck, and we can see that there is, you know, uh, potentially some some good returns, or, you know, another business line within the bank that maybe it's more like consulting services oriented or what have you. Uh, so basically being able to uh, to see that as well. Uh, but again, that's that's just, a, you know, being able to model out again, another another quick scenario. And really that that concludes uh, the demonstration that I was planning to share with you today. And again, uh, you know, banks are facing a lot of turbulent times and this asset present gives them something that they can lean into. To kind of get that, to kind of get their head around the challenge, you know, the the quantitative impact of a lot of these challenges that they're going to be facing, and they can rely on, you know, this single source of the planning truth, this nimble, flexible asset, you know, powered by Anaplan to be able to, uh, you know, to be able to kind of get out in front in front of some of these challenges and model out the impact so they can know so that they know what they need to do going forward.